Chapter 91 Good job, young man you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 91 Good job, young man translator. Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations Fong Yiran was so disappointed in his sister. Had it not been for all these people here, he would have given Fong Lu a lecture, jabbing his finger in her forehead. How could she not see that this was a rare opportunity to impress the crown prince? She was so stupid. Jun Linyuan glanced at Fairy Muyao's plate, which Fairy Muyao didn't notice. But, when Jun Linyuan's glance flickered round to Fong Lu, Fong Lu's heart raced and her cheeks flushed. Involuntarily, she played with a lock of loose hair and was too shy to look up. Fong Sun and the others devoured everything like wolves, and the nine dishes were simply not enough. Soon, all that was left was the chili oil on the plates. Are you really not going to eat that? Fong Sun stared at Fairy Muyao's plate. Fairy Muyao had barely shaken her head when, with a whoosh, the pork fillet was in Fong Sun's mouth. And you don't want it either. Fong Sun asked Fong Lu. Fong Lu didn't know what to say. It was just a piece of meat. Why was young Lord Fong so? He was the young lord of a noble family and a prominent figure in the imperial capital. Why was he behaving like this? Yes or no? Fong Sun asked impatiently. Fong Lu finally came back to herself and shook her head right away. No, however, no sooner had she said that word when Xian Yi's chopsticks arrived, taking that piece of pork fillet. Xian. E. Fong Sun wanted to punch the guy in the face. Xian Yi shrugged and slowly chewed on the meat, further irritating Fong Sun. Dot Fairy Muyao couldn't take it anymore. It was just a piece of meat and this was just another meal. Why are you people like this? You won't understand. Fong Sun rolled his eyes at her impatiently. Fairy Muyao indeed didn't understand. Why did she get the feeling that Fong Sun despised her? Seeing the satiated faces around the table, Fong Wu prompted them in her head. You're all fed now, so get moving. Don't just sit here. She still had her immortal spiritual fruit to work on. Fong Sun noticed Fong Wu's gaze and snapped, What are you looking at? Preoccupied with her immortal spiritual fruit juice, Fong Wu replied without thinking, I'm waiting for you people to leave. Fong Wu shocked herself as soon as she said that. Gosh! What had she said? How could she have spoken her mind? Shit! She was practically shooing them away. Would Jun Linyuan kill her for saying that? As expected, Fong Sun was taken by surprise and so was everyone else. Fong Wu was at a loss for words. What should she do now? What could she do to make up for it? She was still a useless girl, she couldn't afford to offend these young lords yet. However, to Fong Wu's surprise, Fong Sun nodded and smiled in a suggestive manner. Tsk, Tsk, Tsk. Little Fong Wu, you two dot faced woman. Finally, some truth from you. Fong Wu was dumbfounded. What did I say? If you don't want Boss Jun to leave, just say so. We won't understand if you say it so indirectly. Fong Sun's smile was full of innuendo and he was ready for some major gossip. Chapter 92 The Mayor You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 92 The Mayor Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations Fong Wu was crying, no, in her head and secretly begging them to leave. She really needed to start on that nine transformation spirit restoration pill now. Hence, the look on her face was rather conflicted. Fong Sun took it as evidence that he had seen through Fong Wu and he gloated. I was right. You do have a crush on our boss Jun. You dishonest woman. Try to cover that up now. Fong Wu took a deep breath, clenched her fists, and tried her best to restrain herself. Wiping his mouth clean, Fong Sun rose to his feet, went up to Fong Wu, and patted her on the shoulder. Gosh, 
why are you so shy about it? Girls have crushes on Boss June all the time. You'd be an oddball if you didn't. Moreover, you two are an... Ahem. June Linyuan raised a fist to his mouth and cleared his throat. Ednel.Kofong Sun took the hint right away. He turned and darted a glance at Jun Linyuan. Very clever, Boss Jun. By not telling Fong Wu about the engagement, he had the option to marry her, but could still sign the annulment papers if he decided not to. He had the upper hand, it was brilliant. Fong Wu had no choice but to plead with Fong Sun. So. When are you guys leaving? Fong Sun glanced at the empty plates and realized that if they left now, he might never have another chance to have something this delicious again. No, he wouldn't have it. He had to think of an excuse to stay. Darting a contemptuous glance at Fong Wu, Fong Sun said, Since you're begging for us to stay, we'll. Just then, footsteps came from outside. The old steward of the Fong clan arrived. After looking at Fong Wu and Fong Yiran in turn, he went up to Fong Wu in the end and whispered something in her ear. Before Fong Wu could say anything, Fong Xiaoqi cried out and jumped to his feet. What? The mayor's here. He's not making trouble for us again, is he? Fong Sun frowned. Isn't Bai Yunfei the mayor of Northern Border City? Isn't old Bai a good dot tempered chap? Why would he make things difficult for you? Fong Xiaoqi rolled his eyes. Of course he's nice to you. You're a young lord. To us, he's anything but nice. He's been trying to marry my sister to that retarded son of his. Xiaoqi. Fong Wu chided. What? That displeased Fong Sun right away. Who would cook for him if little Fong Wu here was married off to some guy? Would he have to come all the way to the mayor's manor if he wanted to enjoy Fong Wu's cooking? That would be bestowing too big a favor on Bai Yunfei. Fong Wu sighed inwardly. She had thought that she could happily move on to her nine transformation spirit restoration pill after the meal, but things just kept coming up and she couldn't do anything to stop them. Had she known that things would turn out this way, Fong Wu would never have cooked in the first place. Fong Wu waved at the steward. Let the mayor know that we're entertaining some respected guests here and this isn't a good time for him to visit. Tell him to go back, Fong Yiran frowned and cut her off. Fong Wu, you can't just send the mayor away without consulting me. Fong Wu frowned at Fong Yiran. Fong Yiran snorted. I invited the honorable mayor of Northern Border City here myself. He's paying this special visit because the crown prince is here. You can't see the man even if you wanted to on any other day. How dare you refuse him? Chapter 93 What do you think of Fong Wu? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 93 What do you think of Fong Wu? Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations Fong Yiran left in a hurry before Fong Wu could say anything. To him, the mayor was a superior figure. Little Fong Wu. Fong Sun poked Fong Wu in the head. What? Rubbing her forehead where Fong Sun had just jabbed her with his finger, Fong Wu glared at Fong Sun with her clear, pretty eyes. Tisk, tsk, tisk, Fong Sun pursed his lips. That's so not like you. Back then, Fong Yiran used to hang on your every word. You just let him treat you like that now. You're not mad. Fong Wu rolled her eyes, irritated. Aren't you people ever going to leave? Fong Sun gloated. We were going to leave after that meal, but this is getting more and more interesting. How can we leave now? Ha ha ha, Fong Wu smacked her forehead. Turning around, she met Jun Lin Yuan's brooding eyes. Before she knew it, her back went stiff. For some unknown reason, despite how daring Fong Wu was, whenever Jun Linyuan turned those enigmatic eyes on her, she couldn't help but cringe a little. Seeing that Fong Wu had turned away from him, Fong Sun was bored again. He poked her with a finger, then poked her again. 
What? Foam Wu snapped and threw a dirty look at Foam Sun. Is it true? Bai Yunfei wants to make you his daughter. In. Law. Foam Sun asked curiously. Foam Wu took a deep breath. Just then, Foam Yuran showed a smiling mayor by into the courtyard. The mayor appeared to be an amiable middle. aged man. He had nice features and was smiling broadly, he seemed to give off a completely harmless air. However, Foam Sun pursed his lips. To be able to rule a city, especially one on the border like Northern Border City, Bai Yunfei had to be so much more than he appeared. As expected, Bai Yunfei went up to them and saluted Jun Linyuan deferentially. Jun Linyuan sat in the host seat with an impassive face, paying little attention to the all. Smiling Mayor Bai. No one found Jun Linyuan arrogant, for he had always been like that. Mayor Bai then greeted Fong Sun. Young Lord Fong, it has been a while since we last met in the imperial capital. The last time I saw you, you were only seven. You're already a grown dot up now. Fong Sun looked the mayor up and down, examining the latter closely. Mayor Bai was a little jittery at Fong Sun's searching look. Young Lord. Have I displeased you in some way? Fong Sun rubbed his chin and asked unhurriedly, I was told that Mayor Bai has a son. Mayor Bai's stomach lurched. His son had a condition. He had been born with cerebral palsy and his intelligence remained at the level of a five-year-old. However, the young man's favorite was pretty girls, and he couldn't eat without one at the table. Hence, the mayor had had his eye on Fong Wu. Mayor Bai looked from Jun Linyuan to Fong Wu. Back then, the entire continent had been informed of the engagement between Jun Linyuan and Fong Wu. Later, the incident with Fong Wu also became public knowledge. Everyone knew that both the royal family and the crown prince himself had given up on Fong Wu. Mayor Bai then saw Jun Linyuan staring at Fong Wu furiously, which delighted him. He had chosen to visit today not only to ingratiate himself with the crown prince, but also to sound out Jun Linyuan's reaction, so that he could decide whether or not to force Fong Wu to marry his son later. Judging from the look on the crown prince's face, he abhorred Fong Wu. Mayor Bai smiled broadly at that thought. That's right, I do have a son. Unfortunately, he still isn't married and it's been bothering me. His well dot being is my biggest concern. Fong Sun gave him a half-dot smile. What do you think of Fong Wu? Chapter 94 Congratulations, sister you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 94 Congratulations, sister translator. Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations What do you think of Fong Wu? Everyone looked at Fong Sun in astonishment at those words. Jun Li Nguyen's eyes turned a few shades darker. The mayor's eyes lit up. He was here today to get confirmation from Jun Li Nguyen. If the crown prince didn't care about Fong Wu, he would marry the pretty girl to his retarded son right away. Fong Yuran was glad to hear it. Northern Border City was the Fong clan's last resort, for this was where the clan was initially founded. Therefore, the Fong clan had always tried to form an alliance with the mayor of the city. One of the purposes for Fong Yuran's trip here was to make friends with the mayor. Fong Yuran smiled. Xiaowu. Was young Lord Fong recommending Xiaowu to Xiao Dong, the mayor's son? You know what, their names put together sound quite catchy. That's a great sign. Fong Lu had always hated Fong Wu and found the latter a threat to her. Obviously she knew about the retarded son of the mayor, and the news delighted her. Bai Liang Dong, right. I've heard of him. They say that he's quite a handsome man. Why, sister, congratulations. They were going to make the marriage happen just like that. Mayor Bai had been a little concerned before coming here. After all, Fong Wu used to be engaged to Jun Linyuan, and the mayor would be in a difficult spot if the crown prince still held some resentment. Hence, the mayor had been keeping an eye on Jun Linyuan this whole time. 
the crown prince was as distant and unfathomable as ever. His face betrayed nothing. Dovi Ko Fong Sun had always acted as Jun Lin Yuan's spokesperson. When he said that, it had to mean that Jun Lin Yuan didn't care at all. Mayor Bai said with a smile immediately, Am I right to assume that everyone here is happy about the marriage proposal? Of course. Fong Yuan replied instantly. That's great news. No one will say no to that. Since we're all here, why don't we draw up the marriage contract now? Jun Lin Yuan's eyes were as black as bottomless pools. Mayor Bai laughed wholeheartedly. Aren't we rushing things a little here? Shouldn't we send a message to the imperial capital and ask the chief's opinion? The current chief of the Feng clan was Feng Huanyu, Feng Wu's eldest uncle and Feng Yuan's father. Putting an arm around Mayor Bai's shoulder, Feng Yuan smiled broadly. There's no need for that. I'm her eldest brother, which is as good as a father. I'm qualified enough to plan the marriage for her. Moreover, His Royal Highness is here today, and it will be a great honor to have His Royal Highness as a witness. Mayor Bai was over the moon at the suggestion. Feng Yuan knew him too well. He would have nothing to worry about if Jun Lin Yuan signed the contract as a witness. His retarded son had talked about Feng Wu nonstop ever since he laid eyes on her. If it were up to Mayor Bai, he would marry Feng Wu to his son right this moment. Great. Congratulations, sister, Feng Lu took Feng Wu's hands, unable to control her excitement. Feng Wu smirked inwardly. Did these people really think she was going to do as told? Before she could say anything, Feng Sun interjected with a snort. Wait. Chapter 95 I'll make you a deal you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 95 I'll make you a deal translator. Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations, yes, young Lord Fong. Mayor Bai smiled. As the matchmaker, of course young Lord Fong will be an honored guest at the wedding ceremony, ha <laughs> ha. Feng Sun looked at Mayor Bai as if the latter was an idiot. He had thought the mayor a smart guy at first, but as it turned out, he was the biggest fool. Well, I don't think that's possible. Feng Sun curled his lips. Mayor Bai and Feng Yuan asked in unison, Young Lord Feng, are you going back to the imperial capital already? Feng Sun darted a glance at Jun Lin Yuan, who seemed to be as undisturbed as ever. However, anyone who knew the crown prince well enough would realize that the guy was in a terrible mood. And when the crown prince was in a terrible mood, he wanted to kill someone. Going back. Feng Sun rubbed his chin and glanced at Feng Wu. He wouldn't leave northern border city now, even if it wasn't about Feng Wu's cooking. What, then? Feng Yuan asked curiously. For a young lord like Feng Sun, he could stop the proceedings with a single sentence, but he wasn't going to do that, because he had no reason to. He wasn't going to help a proud girl without getting any reward out of it. Feng Sun gave Feng Wu a complacent look. The girl was the one in trouble now, which had nothing to do with him. Hence, he was going to sit by and watch and see if the girl could handle it as effortlessly as she would have been able to five years ago. However, Feng Wu grabbed Feng Sun by his hand at that moment and pulled him to one side. What are you doing? A woman of honor reasons things out instead of resorting to force. Let go of my hand. You'll ruin my virtue. Feng Sun said in a serious tone. Feng Wu stared at him as if she was looking at a mad person. She then lowered her voice and said, Make this go away for me. Seeing that Feng Wu was asking him for help, Feng Sun heaved with joy. Raising his chin, he said arrogantly, I'm not the one being forced into a marriage here. Who are you to me? Why should I help you? Feng Wu said calmly, I'll make you a deal. Feng Sun was intrigued. What deal? You like the spicy Sichuan dishes, don't you? Feng Sun said in exasperation, Why do you say that? I don't. I see. I'll never cook them for you again, then. 
Fong Sun glared at her. You can't do that. Fong Wu arched her eyebrows, rested her hands on her waist, and glared back at Fong Sun. Try me. You, you. You're such a rude girl. Fong Sun glowered. You've got such a fiery temper. A dull beauty. TSK, TSK, you were really good at acting. Fong Wu threw another dirty look at Fong Sun. There was no time to bicker with him now, so she laid her cards on the table. Fix this for me and I'll make you a whole table of Sichuan dishes. All yours and yours alone. Fong Sun's eyes lit up at that. He wiped his mouth and almost said yes. However, habit made him shook his head. One meal. That won't be enough. Let's make it three. Two and that's it. I'll take care of it myself if you won't, Fong Wu turned to leave after that. Hey, wait. Fong Sun pulled Fong Wu back, put his hands on his waist, and stepped out in a lofty manner. You two, what were you saying? Fong Yiran and Mayer by exchanged looks. Fong Wu and the young lord had been talking secretly in the corner just then. Was she going to try some trick again? We were talking about the marriage between Fong Wu and Bai Liang Dong. Fong Lu replied with an ingratiating smile. Chapter 96 Three words you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 96 Three words translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations Since when was Fong Wu going to marry Bai Liang Dong? Fong Sun frowned. No one told me about that. But we only just. Before Fong Yiran could say anything else, Fong Sun stared at Mayor Bai. What? Are you going to take my woman now? Mayor Bai was surprised. His woman. What was that about? Young Lord. I don't understand. Are you going to? Marry Miss Fong. Mayor Bai's pupils contracted and he looked anxious. Fong Yiran stared at Fong Sun. Could Fong Wu be that fortunate? Both Fong Lu and Fairy Muyao eyed Fong Wu with jealousy as well. She didn't deserve such good luck. Jun Lin Yuan kept his gaze on Fong Sun, the look in his eyes indecipherable. Fong Sun shuddered at the question. What the hell? Me, marry her. Are you blind or what? Mayor Bai was confused. Then, throwing his right arm over Fong Wu's shoulder, Fong Sun raised his chin and said in smug satisfaction, Little Fong Wu here is my personal cook and no one is taking her away from me. Mayor Bai, did you consult me first before making her your daughter? In law. Mayor Bai was speechless. So was everyone else. No one had expected Fong Sun to step out, let alone take Fong Wu under his wing. Fong Yiran smiled awkwardly. Young Lord, please don't make fun of us. Fong Wu is still the fifth daughter of the Fong clan, if nothing else. She's not anyone's cook. The Fong clan and the Bai family have both agreed on the marriage, and it's settled. Fong Sun smirked. The Fong clan has agreed. Have you asked little Fong Wu for her opinion? My sister will never do it. She's not marrying that retarded son of the mayor. He's a simpleton. He's handicapped. He has cerebral palsy. All he does is drool. Fong Xiaoqi cried out. Everyone fell silent. Although it was common knowledge that the mayor had a retarded son, no one talked about it. Now that Fong Xiaoqi had loudly pointed it out, they could no longer pretend. Before Fong Wu could say anything, Fong Yiran said, Young Master Bai is a little challenged mentally, but he's a perfect young man otherwise. So, Fong Yiran knew all about Bai Liangdong's condition. Fong Yiran smiled and went on, but, Xiao Wu is useless now. She can't cultivate, which makes her handicapped, too. All she has is that pretty face, and she's very lucky to become a member of the Bai family. Why should she refuse? Fong Wu had yet to say anything when Fong Yiran waved his hand. Plus, an elder brother is as good as a father. 
since my uncle has passed away, I'm the one to arrange her marriage for her. Her opinion doesn't matter. Feng Wu was speechless. Feng Sun was shocked. He had no idea that the obsequious Feng Yiran could be this arrogant in front of Feng Wu. That was so. Off dot pudding, what if I'm the one with objections? Feng Sun smirked. Young lord, please don't make fun of me. Feng Yiran smiled awkwardly. I'm not. I object to it, and I object to it strongly. I object with my life. There. You heard me. Dragging a chair over, Feng Sun put it right in front of Feng Yiran and sat down, crossing his legs and giving Feng Yiran a bite me look. Mayor Bai glanced at Jun Linyuan. To him, Jun Linyuan's attitude was the one that really mattered. Your Royal Highness. The young lord is. Mayor Bai tried to persuade Jun Linyuan to stop Feng Sun. However, Jun Linyuan arched his thick, straight eyebrows and gave Mayor Bai a condescending and arrogant look. He then said three words. Chapter 97 You, get lost you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 97 You, get lost translator. Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations, you, get lost. A hush fell over the courtyard at Jun Li Nguyen's words. All eyes were on the crown prince. After all, Bai Yunfei was the respected mayor of a city like Northern Border City, which made him a high officer of the frontier. Jun Li Nguyen had just told him outright to scram. The smile was wiped off by Yunfei's face and he looked like he had been slapped. His face turned red, then green. Feng Yiran didn't see that coming either. He blanched at how blunt Jun Lin Yuan was. Your Royal Highness. I thought. You didn't like Feng Wu. That was why you called off the engagement, wasn't it? Jun Lin Yuan rose to his feet with his right hand behind his back. He raised his chin and said, Feng the Third. Yes, Feng Sun hurried to his side. However, Jun Lin Yuan wasn't talking to him. He snorted and went on. Step out if you want to compete with him. Anyway, when it came down to it later, Feng Sun was never going to be Jun Lin Yuan's match. Wow. Feng Sun felt like crying. Boss Jun had stood up for him. Boss Jun treated him so well. He. He felt like thanking the boss with his own body. Sob, Boss Jun, eyes twinkling, Feng Sun tugged at Jun Lin Yuan's wide sleeve. Jun Lin Yuan gave him a look of distaste and drew his sleeve back. Only then did Mayor Bai and the others recall the rumor about the Crown Prince. To the Crown Prince, there were two kinds of people in this world. His people and the rest. Feng Sun was his man, hence his support. Feng Wu belonged to the other category. Therefore, Jun Lin Yuan didn't care if she lost the chance at a good marriage, or that she was to be reduced to a cook for Feng Sun's family. Everyone now looked at Feng Wu sympathetically. Feng Wu was speechless. Mayor Bai gave Feng Wu a commiserating glance. One word from Jun Lin Yuan, and Feng Wu had been reduced from a daughter of a respected family to a cook. One couldn't help but wonder what she had done to offend Jun Lin Yuan. Had it been from anyone else, even His Majesty himself, Mayor Bai would have still tried to work around it. However, he didn't dare utter a word now that Jun Lin Yuan had made the decision. He was convinced that Feng Wu would be a little cook for the rest of her life. The mayor lost all interest at that thought. He heaved a sigh for both Feng Wu and his retarded son. However, given his scheming nature, the smile was soon back on his face. Your Royal Highness, I presume that you'll be staying in Northern Border City for a little while. I've had the lingering garden prepared for you. Would you like to take up residence there? Jun Lin Yuan and the others had arrived unannounced, depriving the mayor of the opportunity to entertain them. Now that he finally had an audience with the crown prince, he wouldn't let the opportunity slip away. Feng Yiran was on the alert at that suggestion. 
Dot so, the mayor was really here to rob him of the right to host the crown prince, not the marriage. Bai Yunfei wanted to play up to Jun Linyuan, but so did Feng Yiran. He had an obligation to his entire clan. At that thought, Feng Yiran also forced a smile. Your Royal Highness, the Feng Manor is a little outdated, but it's peaceful and quiet here. If Your Royal Highness would like, the Feng Manor is. Mayor Bai waved his hand, cutting Feng Yiran off. No, of course not. That's so inappropriate. Young Master Feng, your manor is long neglected and in disrepair. I saw some broken roof tiles on my way in. How could His Royal Highness live in a place like this? Before anyone realized it, the merry duo were tearing at each other's throats. Chapter 98 Just Leave You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 98 Just Leave Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations Feng Yiran's mouth fell open. He couldn't believe that the same mayor Bai who had been smiling at him only a minute ago could say such mean words. Mayor Bai cupped his fists at Jun Linyuan. Your Royal Highness, the Lingering Garden is the best residence we have in a remote place like Northern Border City. If it pleases you, please take your residence there so that I can entertain you properly. Feng Wu was delighted to hear that. Good idea. Go live there. She could start working on her nine transformation spirit restoration pill as soon as Jun Linyuan left. Her life was so miserable as a person without cultivation. Feng Wu wanted to push Feng Sun and the others out the door herself. Before she knew it, she was doing exactly what she was thinking. She reached out to push Feng Sun. However, she realized what she was doing when her fingertips touched Feng Sun's back. She drew back her hand right away. Looking over his shoulder, Feng Sun saw Feng Wu's twinkling eyes and rejoiced. Resting his hands on his waist, Feng Sun laughed. Ha ha ha, little Feng Wu, what did you grab me for? Just say so if you don't want us to leave. You should really learn to speak your mind, you know. Feng Wu. She grabbed Feng Sun. Grabbed. She was pushing him. Pushing. Feng Wu was going to explain when she felt Jun Li Nguyen's intense gaze. A chill ran down her spine and the hairs on the back of her neck stood up. Feng Wu insisted, I didn't grab you. I was pushing you out the door, that Feng Sun guffawed. A person as conceited as him would never believe that. You two dot faced woman. I know your type too well. TSK, Tisk, Feng Sun waved his hand to silence Feng Wu, then quickly went to Jun Li Nguyen's side. Boss Jun. Feng Sun whispered something in his ear. Jun Li Nguyen had been frowning before that because of God. Knew that what, after all, no one had ever been able to see through the crown prince. They only knew that Jun Li Nguyen nodded a little in the end. Yeah. Feng Sun was over the moon. Arching an eyebrow, he turned to Feng Wu. Happy now. What? Feng Wu was confused. With his hands behind his back, Feng Sun said to Mayor Bai in smug satisfaction, We're not going to that lingering garden. You can keep it for your son. So. Mayor Bai looked disappointed. We'll be living here. Feng Sun pointed around the Feng Manor and said in a tone of distaste, It's old, shabby, and crowded, but my cook is here. Well, I guess we'll have to make do. Feng Yiran and Feng Lu opened their eyes wide and shook with excitement at the news. However, Feng Wu was baffled. What? They were going to stay. Here. No, no, no. You can't. Feng Wu cried out before she knew it. When could she begin on her nine transformation spirit restoration pill with these people around? She could never take out the immortal spiritual fruit juice she stole from them. You've got to be kidding me. No, it's just like young Lord Feng said, our house is way too small, outdated, and skimpy. It's in no condition for honored guests like you to live in, Feng Wu shook her head repeatedly. 
Chapter 99 Bring Her In You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 99 Bring Her In Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations No Please don't Just leave Right now However, Foam Sun ignored Foam Wu completely Shush, you dishonest woman you're trying too hard. Don't you ever get shy, Nav Om Foam Wu. You're screaming in ecstasy inside. Don't for one minute think you can fool me. Foam Sun mumbled. Foam Wu really wanted to scream now. Go to hell. Foam Sun darted a look at Foam Yiran. You're happy that we're staying, right? Yes. Of course. Foam Yiran nodded immediately wholeheartedly. Sparing no effort. Feng Sun glanced at Feng Wu again. See? That's how normal people react. You're such a hypocrite. Feng Wu was baffled. Screw you. He deserved to have the juice stolen from him, and she no longer felt any guilt over what she had done. Feng Sun dismissed what Feng Wu had to say altogether. Seeing the disappointed look on Mayor Bai's face, he snapped his fingers and said, Mayor Bai, Boss Jun has a very important task for you. Mayor Bai's face lit up. It'll be my greatest honor. As long as the crown prince didn't give him the cold shoulder, he would do anything. Running errands for Jun Linyuan would create opportunities to interact and make contacts. Wasn't that how relationships were built? Of course, even if the crown prince found him too unworthy to interact with, he could still fawn on young Lord Foam here. At that thought, Mayor Bai bowed and asked in humble reverence, how can I be of service? Foam Sun fell silent for a brief moment at that question. All eyes were already on Foam Sun. Hence, everyone saw the strange look on his face. It almost seemed like he was too embarrassed to speak. Young Lord. Seeing the conflicted young lord, who ground his teeth one moment and was completely furious the next, Mayor Bai felt his stomach churn. What on earth had happened to elicit such a reaction? We need you to find a person for us. Feng Sun clenched his fists and stared at Mayor Bai. Hold on. He then darted a look at Feng Wu. Fetch me a writing brush, ink, and paper. Feng Wu smacked her forehead. Was she his servant now? Why did he order her around so casually? Moreover, her heart lurched at Feng Sun's request, for it gave her a very bad feeling. But it went as quickly as it hit her, and she couldn't put her finger on it. Feng Wu didn't move, but more than enough people were willing to do the job. Feng Lu had already dashed out. She returned in no time with all the stationery needed. With a smile on her face, she went up to Feng Sun. Young lord, here are the things you asked for. All right. Laying a sheet of rice paper on the table, Feng Sun picked up the writing brush, dipped it in the ink, took a deep breath, and closed his eyes. He looked reassured when he opened his eyes again. Whoosh, the strokes of the writing brush were heavy and soft in turn on the paper. Before long, a slim figure appeared. When her eyes landed on it, Feng Wu felt like she had been struck by a thunderbolt and she could hear the blood rushing in her ears. Feng Sun finished the sketch in three minutes. Then, with a wave of his hand, the ink dried. Tossing the drawing to Mayor Bai, he said through gritted teeth, If I've guessed right, this ugly girl is right here in northern border city now. Find her and bring her in. Chapter 100 I Wonder you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 100. I Wonder. Translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations Feng Wu gave Feng Sun an indecipherable look. Taking that drawing, Mayor Bai examined it for a moment and said after some consideration, I see that. She's not very good. Looking, Feng Sun smirked. Not only is she ugly on the outside, she's repulsive on the inside as well. I'm going to chop her to pieces when I catch her. 
picking up a random stone, Fong Sun tightened his grip, and the stone was pulverized. Seeing the crumbs drop from between Fong Sun's fingers, Fong Wu's heart lurched. Carefully rolling up the paper, Mayor Bai put it away in his sleeve, then cupped his fists at Fong Sun. Young lord, rest assured that I will find this girl ASAP and bring her to justice. Fong Sun nodded. It's just that. After some hesitation, Mayor Bai decided to ask a question. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about this young woman's crime and maybe her name. It would make my job so much easier. Fong Sun gritted his teeth. Her name. Ha. Huh. Fong Wu's stomach lurched. Shit. She hadn't given it much thought when she met Fong Sun and gave him the first name that came to mind. Fong Xiaowu. Fong Xiaowu and Fong Wu. The two names were so close that with a little imagination, Fong Sun would probably make the connection. No, that was not good. Not good at all. If Fong Sun found out that she was the ugly girl who tricked them and stole that immortal spiritual fruit from them. Fong Wu couldn't begin to imagine how furious Fong Sun would be. Anxiety ate at her. However, Fong Sun only snorted. Forget her name. It didn't sound like a real one in the first place. She was never going to tell us what she was really called. He went on with a smirk on his face. She stole something very important from us, she's just a despicable thief. Keep this in mind. We want her alive. I'll skin her myself. She'll wish she was dead. Seeing the serious look on Fong Sun's face, Fong Wu quietly took a step away from him. Mayor Bai couldn't help but give Jun Linyuan a glance, then gave Fong Sun a wry smile. I'm afraid it won't be that easy, young lord. She was able to steal from you when His Royal Highness was around. She must be a very capable thief. With what she can do, I don't think Northern Border City is well dot equipped to apprehend her. Mayor Bai's words gave Fong Sun a very conflicted feeling. How was Fong Sun supposed to tell the mayor that the thief who stole the fruit was an ordinary girl without talent who had no cultivation whatsoever? How could he bring himself to say it? However, Mayor Bai knew none of that. Instead, he kept on asking, what exactly is this thief specialty? Young lord, please enlighten us. Fong Sun blushed, then blanched. All eyes were on Fong Sun, for the others were all curious about the person that could steal a treasure from them when Jun Linyuan was present. That person had to be very talented. She can't have merely been a spiritual master, can she? Was she a spiritual grandmaster? Oh my, she isn't a spiritual elder, is she? Mayor Bai looked shocked. Fong Wu furtively stuck out her neck like a little weasel and stole a glance at Fong Sun. Fong Sun didn't know what to say. He took a deep breath, then another one. His eyelids twitched. How was he supposed to tell Mayor Bai that the thief wasn't even a cultivator, let alone a spiritual master?